prior to Islam, I, I would see it was a very dark person in the respect that I was very much caught up in consumerism in the material world, that which was of the impermanence. I uh, was very into the culture of the West, um, the movie industry, the, the media, the music, and, and all the hype, and I was very into it, and the styles, the fads, the way of dressing, the at attitude, the mentality, and, and to sum it all up, I, to summarize it all up, I was very, I guess you could say, <coughs> like conditioned to it. Um, like psychologically, I guess it, it it affected me in a way where I was not a, my own person. I, w I was basically a product of society. I, 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 when I was even remember when I was a kid, I, I just I remember I used to watch movies and I always wanted to be in those movies and, and be the star, watching the Grammys and the Oscars and seeing all those those stars and coming down the the red carpet and everyone cheering at them and, and, and I guess you could say even praising them. So this was like my aspirations as growing up as a kid. Now. Financially, it didn't seem to be going down that route because I was I was very like poor. Uh, at one point in my life, I was living with my mother, my father, and my mother had divorced, and I was of a Catholic origin, my my religion, but I wasn't I wasn't religious. I I got into the society and I I began to chill in the street with my friends and I began to engage in activities which which were not benefiting me. In fact, they were poisoning my mind and poisoning my body and my spirit. Um, I remember even even. <coughs> Jesus quotes one time in the Bible, he says that be, they have, uh, we have become a people who, who are like the people who, who clean the outside of a glass, but don't clean the inside. So I was like one of these people who, I would always want to wear nice clothes and, 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 and look nice and put my hair nice, and, but I never clean the inside of my heart. And this was the, the culture of the society. So I began to <coughs> become a person who just, just chilled on the street with my friends and just became like a real, real dark kind of person. Like I said in the darkness. I, I really didn't see Muslims at all my whole life. I never even heard about Islam. So growing up in this society, I, that, that's who I became and I became just a product. I was a consumer just to buy and, and, and just, just to be that kind of person. So this was my background and this is where I was coming from. And my father always taught me there was a God, but I didn't know, like, I didn't understand it, right? Because in this society, again, it's, it's, it's based on materialism, so you don't really seek like the Creator, you, you seek just the worldly things. So I got to a point in my life where I was just getting in, 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 in trouble. My, my soul was in utter chaos. My, like, you, could, you could say my garden within my soul was, was dry and desolate. There was no nourishment there. There was no, there was no, no, no nourishment to, to, for fruits to grow. So I, began, I got to a point where I just I, I was lost and, and I was getting in trouble with the law, I started going to jail, I started just, just getting going down the wrong track. So I began to look because my father had put this seed in my heart. He had told me there's a God. I didn't understand him. So I felt that if, if, if the creation is not helping me, why don't I turn to the Creator? But if I don't understand him, how am I supposed to turn to him? So I began to ask questions. I began to search. I began to ponder. I began to, to, to speculate on what I was growing up and what I, what I thought to be his faith. And I, as, as I began to, to explore, I began to realize that there was a lot of questions unanswered. Which, which couldn't be answered by those who I felt were of, of higher knowledge in regards to these matters. So I just began to search and search and search. And it was in the 2001 when I had actually learned the first time about Islam. And it was as if, it was as if the, the seed which was inside of me just sprouted a leaf. And it began to grow more and more. And it's like the second I heard about Islam, my whole life I never heard about Islam. But the second I heard about Islam, it was as if it just, it just a spark off from within. Or like I was, I was in that darkness, and I heard, I seen a little light flicker, and it kept flickering, flickering, and I just, it just got me interested. And I couldn't explain what it was, because even though, even though I, I was always seeking the materialistic side of the world, this simple thing called Islam seemed to be more, more attractive to me for some reason. So I began to go towards that. My friend, he actually, it was his idea. He said, you know what? You want to just go inside this, this masjid, this masjid, and see what this Islam is all about. So I was like, you know, I'm not doing nothing else. Why not? So we go inside, <clears throat> and me, like um, growing up, I was used to hearing rap music and, and, um, and hardcore hip hop and, and very negative type of things, right, in my ears. But for the first time, I was hearing the purity of the Quran, and it was very weird to me. But but there was something about it again. It was something about that which would seem to nourish that seed for with the seed from within me. So I thought to myself, I'm like, what is this? I want to. There's something about it. It's it's. it's 
It's like a star in the sky which you just can't stop staring at. It just that, that's how Islam seemed to me. So we, we after, after, this was after Maghrib repair, so they had broken their fast and the other brothers were going in to eat in the gym. We approached the masjid and a, brother, a couple of brothers took us in and started talking to us uh, about the five pillars of Islam and so forth. And they gave me a bunch of books. So, so after we had left the masjid, is is if um, it was as if if something followed me. I couldn't I couldn't explain it. It was it was a feeling which was never never there before. It was it was it was something which I couldn't explain. In fact, after we had left, I, we had we go to meet up with our friends, which we were on our way to meet. And when I met them, I looked at them as if I had grown a third eye on my forehead, and I looked at them through different eyes. And I seen the truth and the reality of the situation around me. And it said to me, these people, I have grown up with them my whole life. I've chilled with them. I've, I've, I've shared good and bad times with them. But I said, these people are not for me. And I didn't know why yet. But it was because they didn't know their creator. Because they, as friends, couldn't really support me in a way a friend needs to support a friend. When bad times would come, they didn't give me the correct advice. It was only to that which they had been taught. But that which they had been taught was not of the creator. So after that day, I had changed. In fact, uh, at the time I was still in high school, and um, well, the first book I ever read regarding Islam was called The Truth of Life in This World. And this book deals with life and death. And this was very significant to me in, in how Allah had willed this because everything, my, all, all of my aspirations were about life and about gaining from this life, about becoming a star and getting money and getting all these material things. But I never, it was never on my agenda to ponder death or what happens after death. And this, death was, this book was giving me an example. Look at all these movie stars. When they're young, they're so beautiful and, and, and so forth. But then look at them now, 30, 40 years later. They're old and their death is coming, knocking on their door. So it, it really gave me a reality check. It was like I'm going down the highway and all of a sudden a light turns red and I got to stop. Because I had to stop and realize what was going on in my life and where I'm going. Because, so so this, this, what Allah had shown me is that don't, don't, don't love this world because it's of impermanence. Like in yourself, you're of impermanence. So one of, these are the first things I learned about Islam. And it's, Islam talks about the oneness of God. And in prior, prior to this, I, I, I was a, a Catholic and we say we believe in one God, but he's of a trinity. But Islam defines him as being the one who is without beginning and end, who is perfect in his magnificence. He has no, there's no flaw in him. When I heard these things regarding Islam, it all come together and it just settled nice in my heart. So I said to myself, you know what, Islam is the truth and I'm going to take this road. Because that's what Allah put in my heart. It was about a month and a half after September 11th. So my father had had preconceived notions regarding this religion, Islam. And had had a tainted um, <coughs> ideology towards it. And um, I guess a stereotypical view because of what TV had shown uh, in the events and, and so forth. So I had got to the point where I actually had to leave my house because the situation was getting so bad. I mean, I would try to pray and then he would come into the room drunk and, and it would be just, it speaks for itself, right? So I had to leave, but Alhamdulillah provided for me and I was able to get back on my feet and, and practice my religion. So since then, um, me and my father, we've had a completely different relationship. We sit down as men, we talk on an intellectual basis and we, we have a way better relationship. We can talk as, as, as men. And he respects me as, as, as not only his, as his son, but as, as, a, as, a, as a grown up man. Now I have a wife and a kid. I've moved on to a next level. In fact, those, those around me who knew me from the past, they see me now, they don't even recognize me. They call me Daniel, but really in my heart I'm Shahid. I've changed. I've become a new person. That person who, who once lived and walked down the street with, with such pride no longer exists. This, this, is, this is what Islam has done to me. It has brought my life in a 180 degree turn. It has changed my life in every respect. My characters, my morals, my ideologies, my, my respect and my, my, my admiration for the creation. To the point when I leave my house, I can even just look at a tree and say, All praises be to Allah, that tree is magnificent in its, its scientific structure. When I look at a car, I can see that it's only manipulated elements which have been shaped and fashioned through the knowledge of Allah. Everything is Allah's manifestation in knowledge, and is that how, that's how we know Him. When I leave that, when every morning when I wake up for, for Fajr prayer, I look off my balcony, I see the sun rise, and I appreciate it even more. In fact, after I had become Muslim, I remember one time when me and my, my friend Ayub, we had sat down for over an hour watching a bee going from a flower to a flower, just watching it in amazement, because we never really realized. 
Growing up as a kid, I used to have peanut butter and honey sandwiches, but I never pondered on where the honey came from. The fact of the matter is, is Allah has made that be with a purpose, and that purpose is to gain, get pollen, bring it back to the hive, and it never goes against its purpose. It always does that. And then they, bring, they, they, they manufacture it or so, ever pasteurize it, whatever they do, and it goes into the, those little machines, and then it comes and they spread it on our bread, and we eat it at school. But you never really, you never really ponder on that. So I can say Islam has changed my mentality completely. I, I think on a different level. I mean, alhamdulillah, man. I, Allah knows where I might be today. If, if Allah hasn't, hasn't saved me and brought me to this Islam.